Hello everybody and welcome back to another one of our 7 star terror raid build videos. This episode we're actually focusing on Incineroar which is the next 7 star terror raid that was just recently announced literally earlier today. Um, that was, you know, it was a bit of a surprise. I kind of forgot that they were doing these because I did all the other 7 star terror raids, the Dragonite, Dondozo, and Pikachu so long ago that like completely, you know, skip my mind that there were probably going to announce anyone soon. So it was a nice surprise to open up my phone and see that there was another one I had to make some builds for and get ready for. Incineroar, of course, is a fire dark Pokemon, as I'm sure many of you know, especially if you play this game competitively. Um, it is kind of a competitive staple, so it'll be cool to get one with the uh, the Mightiest Mark for that unrivaled tag. That's pretty cool to see. Um, its terror type is going to be dark type here, which is, again, a little interesting. It's similar to the Primarina that we had a while ago, where its terror type was just a copy of one of its original typings. That, of course, does change its type defensively, as well as boosts that option um, for stabs. So its dark type moves are going to be doing even more than normal. Um, I can't remember what the exact boost is, but it's more than the just basic stab thing. So Incineroar's dark moves are going to be doing a lot, and we had to take that into account while building these Pokemon. Um, of course, Incineroar has a lot of very, very good moves. Flare Blitz is a prime example of how this Pokemon can dish out a lot of damage. It's a huge base power fire type move that gets the stab boost from fire type, which again, it doesn't lose when it terrestrialized in a dark type. Keep that in mind. Cross Chop's also a pretty good option. It's a decent coverage option. It's a bit of an interesting move um, for this Pokemon to run. Uh, they like to run little like fun moves. I've noticed on these seven star terror raids why it's on there. Cross Chop has, I think, an 80 base power, but a heightened critical hit ratio. And I've noticed they've decided to run some fun things like that from time to time. So I thought I'd throw it up there. It's a pretty good move. It's a fighting type move, so it can take down. Um, a little, it, it's a little bit of extra coverage than Snorlax wouldn't have had otherwise. Bulk up, I feel like is a fantastic option, and I'm almost, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to run that. It also does get Sword Stance, which is worth mentioning. But I've noticed when they can, when they have the option between Bulk up and Sword Stance, I feel like they've more consistently gone for Bulk up. Darkest Lariat's also Incineroar's signature move. It's absolutely going to run Darkest Lariat. Of course, being a dark type move, but ignores stat boosts. So we don't have really any defensive stat boosting Pokemon built here. Um, not like, realistically, I don't think that would have helped much anyway, because you don't really want to boost your defense. You want to help your team. And the way best way to do that is to hurt Incineroar. Um, so, you know, I guess that's not really too big of a deal, but it's all right. It's a signature move. I'm, I can almost guarantee it's going to be on there. Acrobatics, Bulldoze, and Shadow Claw are three great coverage options for this Pokemon. Of course, if Incineroar is not holding a held item, Acrobatics is going to be boosted up to that 110 base power. That's very, very scary. Um, and Bulldoze and Shadow Claw also being there for, for helping Incineroar out against types that might not, not have been able to hit very well otherwise. Brick Break's also on there. Another fighting type move in case it doesn't want to run Cross Chop. Sunny Day, Fire Fang, Thunder Punch, and Iron Head are in its honorable move mention list. Sunny Day, of course, being able to boost Fire type moves. Fire Fang, Thunder Punch, and Iron Head are all three great coverage options for this Pokemon that it could definitely run. Because believe it or not, Iron Head does pretty well against one of its counters, being the Fairy type. Acrobatics also does well against its other two counters, being the Fighting and Bug type Pokemon. So I don't know if they'd put Acrobatics on it. I feel like it'd make the raid like a little bit too hard, if I'm being honest. But just keep in mind that it does get that move and kind of be prepared for it. Our sets do take that into account, and some of them are better handled or better um, suited to handle that. Um, so I'll try to mention that when we go through our sets that we built. Incineroar, of course, does get the Blaze ability, as every Fire-type starter Pokemon does, and Intimidate is what makes Incineroar so powerful. Of course, Intimidate's only going to be able to activate once during this Terror Raid battle. And it's going to lower your attack stat by one stage, unless they do something a little different, which I don't think they've any done anything weird with abilities yet. Um, so I'm not expecting it to activate multiple times, but of course I'm more so expecting it to see, to use Intimidate. I feel like that's probably the better option out of the two abilities. Of course, as a pure dark type Pokemon, um, which this Incineroar will be due to its terror type, it will be weak to fighting, bug, and fairy. Of course, fighting and fairy are probably your better two options. Bug is weak to Incineroar's fire type moves, which it gets stabbed for as well. Um, so that's obviously a little scary. So I'd probably recommend staying away from bug unless you can have a Pokemon that can take those fire type moves better. Like maybe like a Raquinid would be okay. Um, I actually didn't build a Raquinid, but that's an okay option. Something like that, that can, um, it won't take super effective damage from those fire moves, but still can use that bug, bug stab option. Um, it might be fun, you know, I like bug types. I didn't build any here because I didn't really think of too many that were going to be super, super useful. But, you know, if, if you find one that works for you, let me know in the comments below. I'm kind of excited to see what that is. Um, this Pokemon will be in Terra Raids from September 6th through September 8th. And then once again, from September 13th through September 15th. During that second run of raids, Incineroar will be running alongside the Blissey Raid event that we've seen plenty of times before that has the heightened drop chance for experience candies and Terra Shards, which will be good for obviously building for future Terra Raids, or if you're still struggling with the Incineroar by that time, you'll have the plenty of resources that you need to build a one of these Pokemon that we're about to show off today. So with that being said, let's get over into our Pokemon. Our first one here, of course, is the Terra Raid staple. We've got Azumarill. Azumarill is a water and fairy Pokemon with the terror type of fairy, and you're going to give it the Azumarill special of the Shell Bell held item. 
when it comes to moves. Rain Dance is a pretty safe option on this Azum roll. You can expect this in Zoom roll to want to run, want to press that fire flare blitz option or some other fire move. And obviously, Rain Dance just nerfs that. It makes it way harder for Incineroar to do consistent damage with those fire moves. Flare is going to be in is uh, I almost said Incineroar. Azum roll's uh, main da damage output move. Um, and Chilling Water is going to be the way you're going to get to your Terra. Obviously, Chilling Water is a special move, and Azumarill is a physical Pokemon, so it's not going to be doing a whole lot of damage. But by doing damage and hurting Incineroar, you not only build your Terra, but you lower its attack stat guaranteed every turn, which can be very, very helpful for your team. Um, so I definitely recommend building up your Terra by pressing that a few times and then starting to go for player offs once you hit that Terra Fairy, which Terra Fairy, I think I said that, but just to be sure. Belly Drum's also on here, but here's a word of warning. Belly Drum is really, really good on Azumarill, but you've got to know when to use it. You shouldn't just open a raid and press Belly Drum, especially if Incineroar runs something like Thunder Punch or something that can take down Azumarill pretty easily. Pressing Belly Drum cuts your HP in half, and that can completely lose you your Pokemon. And when you faint, your team takes a big hit to the timer. You do not want that to happen. You press that Belly Drum when you know your Azumarill can live the next hit or two, and you know you're going to be able to get a player off, play rough off, and be able to heal a bunch of health with that Shell Belt item. Once you know you can consistently, safely press play rough and heal back more damage than you're taking, then press that belly drum, but otherwise stay away from it. Focus on your chilling waters, focus on pressing rain dance, focus on pressing play rough if you've already gotten your Terra. That's a very important thing to keep in mind during this raid, and during any raid with Azumarill, truthfully. Of course, Azumarill is going to be running huge power, which doubles his attack set up to a whopping 436, which is kind of ridiculous. When it comes to its EVs, you want to max out HP, max out attack, and put the last little bit into defense. A lot of our Pokemon are focused on Flare, or Incineroar's um, physical attack stat here, um, because that it's substantially higher than its other attack than its special attack stat. Its physical attack stat is notably higher, like it's not even close. Its defenses are equal, but again, its special attack is so much lower than its physical attack stat that I almost guarantee that this Pokemon is going to be running a completely physical move set. So the last little bit of remnants of EVs we have, we're probably going to be putting mostly into defense if we don't max that out for the rest of our builds and our defensive Pokemon really focus on that stat. Again, huge power is going to be its ability. And when it comes to IVs, everything matters except special attack, which I guess you could kind of say matters because we're using chilling waters. But again, you're not trying to get damage with chilling water. You're just trying to build your terror and lower uh, its Norse attack stat. This Pokemon is going to want to be an adamant nature, which is up attack and minus special attack. Moving on to our next Pokemon, we have another Pokemon that's actually been in a few of these videos before. I think all of our, well, all the Pokemon I built today have actually, I've, I've used previously, funnily enough. We've got Quagsire here. Quagsire, of course, being the water and ground type Pokemon, you're going to give it the Terra type of Fairy, which is a little bit abnormal, but you'll see why that is in just a second, and the Heldenum of Leftovers. Quagsire doesn't get great healing with its moveset otherwise, so I thought Leftovers would be a pretty all right option. Obviously, it'll hurt your timer a little bit, but with Quagsire, you're not really focusing on damage output anyway. You're more so focusing on, as you can see here, hurting Incineroar. Uh, based on its stats specifically, not its HP. Um, otherwise, it would just be damage. But Terra Blast is going to be your main damage output if you need it. Otherwise, do not press it. If you notice your team will benefit from having just a slight bit more damage, then you have Terra Blast and you Terrasalize and get that Fairy Typing. Otherwise, I think the Water Ground Typing will actually help Quagsire more. Um, so maybe stay like that unless you really, really need it for your team. Like, you know it's the make or break. Chilling Water, Acid Spray, and Mud Slap are its main uh, three moves that you're going to be using a lot. Chilling Water, of course, 100% chance to lower the Incineroar's physical attack stat. Acid Spray is 100% chance to lower the Incineroar's special defense stat. And Mud Slap is 100% chance to lower the accuracy. Excuse me. These are all three great moves for making sure your team stays alive and is doing consistent damage. This Quagsire will not beat an Incineroar on its own. I want to make that so clear. This, this Quagsire is not going to solo the Incineroar. However, it will make it so your other teammates can deal with it super easily. Unaware is this Pokemon's ability, which makes it so that if Incineroar does use bulk up, it's okay. Uh, you won't you won't take the boost to damage. You're unaware of it, so <laughs> you'll be fine. When it comes to its stats, you want to max out HP, max out defense, and put the last little bit in a special attack. So, you know, you get a little bit of extra damage out of those Chilling Water, Acid Sprays, Mud Slaps, and Terra Blast. Realistically, again, you're not going to want to be pressing that Terra Blast. You're focusing on support with this Quagsire. I can't stress that enough. You're focusing on those cheers. You're focusing on pressing those buttons, the the the, your move buttons, I guess, <laughs> to, to hurt and and make sure your team can stay alive and deal a lot of damage. I'd probably recommend leading with a few Chilling Waters to get Instant War's attack sat down so you can stay alive. Maybe then a Mud Slap or two and then start Acid Spraying, especially if you notice your team is primarily specially offensive. When it comes to IVs, everything matters except your attack stat, and this thing is going to want to be a Bold Nature, which is plus defense and minus attack. Moving on to our third Pokemon, we've got another water type. I believe the last water type we have for today. We've got Primarina here. 
Primarina is the water and fairies Pokemon. Its third type is going to be fairy, and it wouldn't give it the light clay held item, which makes it so moves like reflect and light screen will affect or will last longer, being eight turns instead of five. And as you could have guessed, we do run reflect on this thing. <laughs> Moonblast is going to be your main damage output. Um, but again, you're not really pressing Moonblast to try to deal a whole lot of damage. It's more so just like. No, you are. What am I talking about? <laughs> this Pokemon is primarily trying to deal a bunch of damage um, with that Moonblast option. Um, reflect is another great choice. If you set up a Reflect, it's always going to be dealing a whole lot less damage. Um, Chilling Water, again, on here for the same reason it was on the other two Pokemon to make sure Incineroar deals less damage. And Rain Dance, again, to do the same. This Pokemon, you'll notice, actually, despite the fact that we maxed out HP and Special Attack, is a old nature, which is plus defense and minus attack. You might be asking, why didn't I choose Modest? Well, Primarina can take hits pretty well already. It has decent bulk. Um, so, you know, you don't need it to be fully invested in that, especially because it resists both of Instant Roar's stab typings. So, But a little bit of extra bold help will help in the long run by making sure you can kind of stay a bit above like the line where you need to start being worried. And before you get there, hopefully you'll have gotten a few chilling waters off, maybe rain dance or reflect, and you can start pressing moon blast and healing a bit with your cheers. That light clay will make reflect last longer than normal. It'll be very nice. This Pokemon does get two abilities. Torrents is probably best one here. It's not even that great. It'll make your chilling waters do more damage when your HP is low, but your other ability doesn't do anything. It's, I think it's called liquid voice, which turns uh, sound moves into water moves, but like we're not doing that <laughs> so it's okay um again max out hp max out special attack it's gonna be bold nature which is pl minus attack plus defense and it's ivs everything matters except attack i think i mentioned before light clay is really really important on this pokemon and again terra fairy so those moon blasts can be dealing a whole lot of damage once you eventually do terrasalize moving on to our next pokemon we've got a bit of a fun one here we've got clefairy we've seen this pokemon before clefairy of course being a fairy pokemon and its terror type is going to be fairy evil light's going to be a tall item which increases its defense and special defense by quite a bit because clefairy can still evolve um, oh, I didn't finish off its EVs here. I think I forgot special attack. Um, <laughs> you're going to want this Pokemon to run Life Dew, Reflect, Helping Hand, Chilling Water. This is another very, very support-focused Pokemon. Life Dew, of course, being able to heal your entire team a little bit. So in case you run out of the Shield Shears, it's a very good option. Reflect on here for the same reason it's been on the, every other Pokemon. That's Incineroar's primary attack stats. So you're going to press that so it deals less damage. Helping Hand so that once you start... Like, no, noticing your team doesn't really need any more Chilling Waters or Life Dews, and it reflect is up, you can start making sure they're dealing dealing a lot more damage by using Helping Hand on your main damage output teammate, whatever that is. And Chilling Water to help, you know, make sure Incident Wars doing less damage. You know, it's on here for the same reason it's been on every other Pokemon. And Chilling Water is a very good move, so, you know, expect to see it on a lot of Pokemon builds for, against physical raid bosses. Friend Guard is going to be its ability, which makes your team take even less damage. I think only three quarters of what they would normally, which is a very, very nice, uh, very, very nice drop down i'll say that when it comes to evs you're going to max out hp max out defense and as not shown here put the last four points in a special attack so your chilling waters do slightly more can't believe i forgot to do that I, I swore i checked it all but that's okay um realistically the chilling water you're not trying to deal a whole lot of damage anyway so even if you do forget special attack it's okay um but when it comes to its nature plus defense minus attack which once again is the bold nature friend guard being its ability is pretty important and when it comes to ivs everything matters except your attack stats you don't care what that value is now, our next two Pokemon are a bit of interesting ones. We've got one that's a Scarlet exclusive and one that's a Violet exclusive. So if you're one or the other, stick around. You know, you'll get the one that you, you can, you're you able to get, so don't worry. Our first one here, of course, being the Scarlet exclusive, we've got Great Tusk. Great Tusk is a ground and fighting type Pokemon. You're going to give it the Terra type of fighting. I can't believe I, I did ground here, but I meant to give it fighting. So I apologize for that. It's fighting. <laughs> um, you're going to give it the Shell Bell Hull item. I'm making all kinds of mistakes today. That's okay. I'm very tired. <laughs> you're going to give it the Shell Bell Hull item. And when it comes to its moves, you want Bulk Up, Body Press, Mudslap, and Taunt. Mudslap on there to help you build your Terra once you get up there, or you notice you're taking a little bit too much damage, maybe press a Bulk Up or two. Obviously, if the Insta is using Darkest Lariat against you, against you, which realistically I don't think it will, you should be okay as long as it doesn't use Darkest Lariat. Even if it does, you resist it, I'm pretty sure. So it shouldn't matter too much. Taunt, in case you notice that Incineroar is spamming on um, Bulk Up, or like something like the Incineroar is like at halfway through the battle it uses bulk up six times maybe taunt it right before that happens and then once you reach the point where you can terrestrialize into fighting not ground into fighting <laughs> let's make that very clear you want terra fighting not ground um you can start pressing body press to deal a whole lot of damage especially after a few bulk ups it'll be pretty nice ability is obviously protosynthesis is the only thing we have so if instant does use sunny day maybe you'll get a nice little i think attack boost yeah um, when it comes to stats you want to max out hp max out attack and put the last four points into defense there 
Um, its nature is going to be adamant, which is plus attack, minus special attack, and you're going to be, I already said that, adamant. <laughs> yeah, and everything matters when it comes to IVs except special attack. This Pokemon is going to be holding the Shell Bell Hell item, which will let it heal a bit once you start dealing a whole lot of damage with that Terra Fairy. Nope, not Fairy. <laughs> Terra Fighting. I'm, wow, okay. Terra Fighting. You want Great Tusk to be Terra Fighting. Not ground like on the screen right now. Terra Fighting. Anyway, moving on to our last Pokemon here. We've got the one, the only, Iron Hands. Iron Hands, I'd be surprised if you guys don't already have one of these Pokemon built for raids. And realistically, the one you have built should work pretty well. Iron Hands, of course, being the fighting electric type, it's going to be Terra type fighting. And I'm going to give it the Scope Lens Held item. When it comes to moves, you want this thing to be Drain Punch. Of course, you know, it's Iron Hands. What would you expect other than Drain Punch? Electric Terrain, just in case you notice some other Iron Hands on the field, you can use that and give them a nice little boost to their attack stat. Focus Energy is probably what you're going to want to lead with. Boosting that critical hit ratio is actually really, really big, especially with the Scope Lens. I think you then almost have a guaranteed crit ratio, which is very, very nice. And Belly Drum, again, be very careful about using that. It's very powerful, but you need to be very careful about using it. It's a very risky move, especially in terror raids where Instant War might be able to do a lot of damage. So maybe uh, if you can communicate with one of your teammates that you need a defense cheer and then maybe a heal cheer real quick before you use Belly Drum, but then you'll be dealing so much damage that I feel like it, you might be able to solo the raid at that point. So um, just keep that in mind. Only press it if you know you can live a hit or two. When it comes to stats, you want to max out HP, you want to max out attack, the last four points into defense. Um, its nature is going to be adamant once again, which is going to be plus attack, minus special attack. And when it comes to IVs, everything matters except special attack. This Pokemon's only ability is Quark Drive, which won't do too much unless you have some other Iron Hands. Or one of you uses Electric Terrain, which will be pretty nice. You know, you get a nice little attack boost there, which is normally pretty a pretty good boost. So maybe, maybe lead with that, even if you're the only Iron, iron Hand in the field. It might be a good call. With that being said, that's all of our Pokemon we have built here for you today. I do apologize. Again, keep in mind, Great Tusk is fighting type, not ground type. That's the only real big issue I've had here. Obviously, the Clefairy needs a little bit of special attack, but that's okay. <laughs> Just remember, Great Tusk fighting. Great Tusk fighting. Um, but with that being said, I'm going to call this here. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Make sure to tune in um, for the next 7-star Terror Raid, whatever that is. And I hope you guys see you guys out there in those 7-star and Sonora Raid Dens. And good luck. Have a good day.